Hello and welcome to our worship on Sunday the 24th of May from the parishes of Bulbra and Clown. It's great to have you with us today. Um, I hope you're liking the slightly new format. Um, I'm, I'm slowly learning different things that we can do with these pre-recorded services. Um, I did get some feedback in the week, somebody saying that they preferred seeing me on the one side of the page and the text on the side um, it's simpler to read and to follow so I hope that's working for you um, as usual if you would like to follow the words in yellow as we work our way through the service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Alleluia Christ is risen he is risen indeed Alleluia Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. And so we prepare to worship God together. And we say this prayer. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth through jesus christ our lord amen and so we come before our merciful and forgiving god with those things that we regret from this week Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thought this week we would try using the Peruvian Gloria uh, for the Gloria uh, today rather than having the organ um, and so I'm going to sing a line and I'd like you to sing the response so you just repeat after me I will sing the whole thing through um, but and you can join in in the repetitions um, hopefully it's going to work <laughs> <clears throat> glory to God glory to God glory to the Father Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. So let us pray this week's collect together. Let us pray. 
O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. The lesson is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jesus from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the first letter to Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice, in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourself. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. Do you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering? And as you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be power for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. 
Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever noticed how much waiting is in the Bible? Noah and his family wait for 40 days in the ark. The people of Israel wait in the wilderness for 40 years to find the promised land. Elijah waits in the desert for 40 days on Mount Horeb. Again, the people wait to return to Jerusalem from the Babylonian exile for years and years. Waiting, waiting. Jesus takes this pattern in the Gospels. After his baptism, he is pushed into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted and tested. He then always ensures that he takes himself away from the crowds to pray. He does this before he chooses the 12 apostles. He prays at the transfiguration. And of course, before he goes to face the cross, he waits and prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. The times of waiting are not wasted time. If they were, the biblical writers would not have wasted their time telling us about them. Wait on the Lord, the Bible says in numerous places. The word wait, translated from the Hebrew, is closely related to the word hope or expect. The times of waiting in the Bible are all times of growth and preparation. We only have to look to our gardens for inspiration on what it means to wait on the Lord. Much of the growth of a planted seed takes place out of sight, underground. On the surface, it looks as if nothing is happening, but beneath that soil is a riot of activity. When Luke writes his books, the Gospel bearing his name and the sequel to it, the Acts of the Apostles, he deliberately uses this imagery of 40 days of waiting to describe the time between the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus. And we keep these 40 days in the church calendar for Eastertide. During these 40 days, Jesus appears to the disciples, teaches them about scripture and helps them to prepare for his exodus, his departure, what we call his ascension. He orders his disciples not to leave Jer Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the comforter and companion. And so naturally, the disciples stay in Jerusalem to pray and worship, mirroring the pattern Jesus has shown them of prayer before action, of waiting on the Lord in hope and expectation. Now you only have to read the Bible to discover that these periods of waiting are tough. They're not easy. And we are in one of these periods of waiting alongside those who have gone before us in the faith. We wait, and so if we want to follow the example of Christ, we must wait and pray to see what will emerge from this time of exile, from our buildings and from each other. This week, let us pray with Christians all around the world for the Holy Spirit to come and transform our world, to make it new, to build something new from what went before. We are not waiting alone. 
Peter writes in his letter this week some words which seem so poignant to our own situation. He writes, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. What a powerful prayer from Peter himself for each one of you. Truly, we have brothers and sisters all around the world undergoing the same suffering as us as we experience this pandemic. Together, we pray and we wait knowing that Jesus did not leave us comfortless but gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. We watch and pray and wait for the new life to emerge together. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Let us pray. For the next few moments, let us relax in the presence of Christ, knowing that he loves and cares for each one of us. After the bidding this morning, in your loving kindness, O God, the response is, have mercy and hear our prayer. In your loving kindness, O God, have mercy and hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, knowing that there are thousands of people who are really struggling at this terrible time in our country and throughout the world. We ask you, Lord, today to come to your people with your loving care that they may know your presence with them. In your loving kindness, O God, have mercy and hear our prayer. We want to give you thanks today, Lord, for all those who work in the caring profession, in whatever form that may take. We thank you for their dedication, their devotion, not only to their work, but also to their patience. In your loving kindness, O oh God, have mercy and hear our prayer. The coronavirus has taken so many lives of people who had so much to look forward to and so much to offer. We thank you, Lord, for each one of them and pray for their loved ones in this time of great sadness and of testing. In your loving kindness, O oh God, have mercy and hear our prayer. And so in a moment of silence, we pray for anyone we would want to pray for, particularly remembering the family of David Alton 
a member of our Thursday congregation at Clown, who passed away last week. We thank God for David's life, a lovely man, a man who gave so much to so many. In your loving kindness, O God, have mercy and hear our prayer. So we pray, Heavenly Father, for all our loved ones, wherever they may be, scattered throughout this country and throughout the world. We pray, Lord, for your protection upon them. We pray for your healing power upon them and we pray particularly for those who are going through very difficult and testing times at this moment in your loving kindness O oh God have mercy and hear our prayer merciful father Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us gather all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to our act of spiritual communion. You may wish to change your posture. You may wish to kneel as if you're kneeling at the altar rail. You may wish to hold your hands out with your palms facing upwards to receive the Holy Spirit. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. I will leave a time of silence for you to pray this prayer yourself.
Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us bow our heads to receive God's blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thanks again for joining us for worship this week. Um, we should see you again, same time, same place next week. Um, we will be continuing in this vein for quite some time, I should think. Uh, but do join us um, in our Facebook group. Um, also, um, use our church website, bcjj.org.uk, to get everything that we're doing, um, even the stuff that's on Facebook. We do post it all um, on the website as well for those of you that don't use Facebook. Do also subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you click on the red subscribe button on YouTube um, on this channel, um, the more people subscribe, the better. So um, I hope you like the new, the new channel that I've dedicated just for our churches um, as we go forwards. 
So as we do move into a new week, another week of unknowns, another week of waiting, um, we go with the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within each one of us. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship. Loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity, a generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, Here's how you can help.